Welcome to my presentation. In this presentation, let us see some of the properties related to inverse of a matrix. So, let us define this. If, if A is a invertible matrix, if A is an invertible matrix, let me write that. A is a invertible matrix and then if k is a positive integer and if c is a constant or constant or a scalar quantity then the following properties of inverse are true. A inverse A K or C times matrix A and A transpose are all invertible. These are all can could be invertible. Invertible. Okay? So that is the definition. Then one, if we have A, A as a matrix, the inverse of the matrix, we can find the inverse of the matrix, and if we were to go back and then find the inverse of that matrix, it is going to come back to the original matrix A. Then, the second property is, the second property is telling us that if we have A to the power of K, and this whole thing is raised to another exponent, like that. We have seen this in our exponential rules. We can expand this one out as a to the power a, a to the power of negative one times a to the power of negative one times a to the power of negative one all the way to a to the power of negative one uh, to the power of k. And this could be raised to k factors. K factors, right? Therefore, that is one property. The next property we want to keep in mind when solving problems is as follows. If we have a constant C and that is multiplied to a matrix A and that is inversed, we could write this one as C inverse A inverse. We could also write this one as 1 over C to the power of negative 1 if we have c to the power of negative 1, we can bring it down to the denominator and write it as a positive exponent. c to the power of negative 1 or c means exactly the same. So we can write this as 1 over c, a inverse, like that. Okay? And the next property is, if we have uh, a as a matrix, and if we were to transpose that matrix, if we can represent that as a t, and then if that is inversed, it is the same as performing this operation. If we can first inverse the matrix and then transpose it, whatever elements we have by doing the left hand side of the operation, we will have the same type of elements in the final product when we do, when we perform inverse first and then transpose it. So these are some of the properties we want to keep in mind going forward to be able to solve some simple problems. So in my next presentation, we shall try to see how to use these properties of inverse to solve some simple example problems.